Okay, so what we're now going to do is just take a look around, uh, firstly, Node.js. Then we're going to take a look at MongoDB as well, just to familiarize, familiarize ourselves with how this is going to work. And uh, if you're very new to this, this sh hopefully will help you understand how and why we're connecting in this way or, or doing these things. Now, the first things that we really need to do is install Node.js and install MongoDB. Now, the instructions on the websites are fairly straightforward. So go ahead, install Node.js, install MongoDB, follow the instructions, um, and we'll go ahead and actually work with them now. If you're using Linux or uh, you're using uh, you know, Mac or something like that, um, OS X, then this will be different for you. I happen to be using Windows just because I record on a Windows machine, um, but it's probably not recommended to use Windows. If you are using Windows, it really doesn't matter. Um, you know, it's, it's going to work in exactly the same way. Well, more or less exactly the same way. Um, but generally, you would set this up on a, on a Linux mas machine. However, um, once we have everything installed, we're now uh, going to get to the point where we actually have a look inside this and, and uh, run a server.js file using Node. Um, but if you haven't installed Node.js and MongoDB, go ahead and do it now. Pause the video, come back when it's all done or when you think it's done, and then you can follow the video and, and you know look at how it, everything sort of fits together. And then if you need to make any adjustments, you can do based on what you see in the video. So um, with Node, uh, the only thing that I've really had to do after installing it on a Windows machine is just head over to my system properties under my environmental variables and under the path um, here, I've had to just basically add the path to the Node.js installation and that's all I've had to do. Um, that will allow me to basically use Node in my command prompt. So that's basically the only thing I've had to do here. With MongoDB, I've got this stored just in MongoDB here and the data file in the MongoDB installation instructions, you'll see that you need to create a data directory and that's also in my C drive as well. If we just um, CD over to that, you can see I've got a data directory here and that just contains all of the databases I've been testing with. So go ahead and create that. You also have this DB directory as well. Um, so, you know, I've created a few databases with silly names, um, but that's just basically an idea of what you need to do. So for now, I'm going to head over to Mongo db and bin or binaries so these are all the files that we could potentially run we're going to be focusing on mongo d and also mongo so mongo d is the daemon that allows your mongo installation to run and mongo lets you manage it so let's go ahead and actually start um, with pro probably looking at node.js it's just uh, makes more sense so your node.js server needs to be consistently running for your chat to be able to work. So how do we run a Node.js server? Well, what we'll do is just head over to our text editor and create a new file um, within our directory here. I'm gonna call this server.js. So this is a JavaScript file, remember. So Node.js is actually running JavaScript, um, if you know anything about Node.js. So in here, I'm just gonna, you know, basically say console log worked or something like that. So we can go ahead and over in our command prompt, we can go ahead and actually run this. So if we look inside of here now, we've got this server.js file. We can go ahead and use node to run server.js. And there we go, it worked. So this is what we're going to do in order to start our node.js server that's going to listen for uh, socket IO um, connections and clients connecting and pushing up messages and things like that. However, there are a few things that we need to do, or a couple of things we need to do. We need to install server IO using Node Package Manager, and we need to use uh, install MongoDB using uh, Node Package Manager as well. So MongoDB is just going to be a Node module, and basically uh, all this is going to do is allow us to use this uh, MongoDB functionality, connect to a specific database, and actually access our database. Uh, socket IO is basically going to run on this on on this side of things as well because that's a dependency we need to listen for connections but within our front end of things inside of our actual page we're going to connect to the node.js server and actually uh, include the server IO uh, or the socket IO sorry file from our node server so that might be a little bit confusing but it might make sense a bit later on so we're going to go ahead and use Node Package Manager, so NPM, and we're going to go ahead and install Socket IO. And we'll go ahead and just wait for that to run through, and that will go ahead and install it. So now if we do a directory listing, we get this Node Modules folder. So let's go ahead and just take a peek inside of there. 
And we, we, you can see we've got socket IOS. So that's basically the first dependency installed. Um, what we can now do is go back to our chat. Went back a, too far. Um, we're going to now install MongoDB, and it's basically just a case of npm install MongoDB. And that's all we need to do. Wait for that to go ahead and install. Uh, CD over to node modules. And we can see we've got MongoDB in there as well. So that's going to allow us to use this functionality from within our server.js file, which at the moment just console logs. So that's all we need to do for now. We will write the rest of our code inside of server.js and also on our page as well. So we don't need to worry about anything for now. We've got our dependencies installed. Now, in terms of MongoDB, let's just take a little brief overview of, of how this all works. Now, I'm inside the binaries folder inside MongoDB. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ro run Mongo Daemon. Now, what that's going to do is it's going to start listening for connections. That's basically the database running. So that's, that's our database running. Now, if we grab a new console in the same uh, bin binary uh, folder, let's now go ahead and just run Mongo. Now what this has done is it's connected to our database and you can see that this has changed now we've got one connection open. It's automatically connected to test. Now we can, uh, this is quite strange if you come from a MySQL background or any other server background, but when we go ahead and use a database in here, it will automatically create that database for us. We don't need to create a database. We don't need to define columns. We don't need to define anything like that. It's very, very, very uh, dynamic. So this is how it this is how it works. And it may take a little bit uh, of getting used to. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to use a database called Chat. So this is uh, basically our test database. So it's now switched to database chat. Now this did actually exist in my DB, uh, in my um, data folder, uh, in my DB folder within data folder, but it doesn't need to exist. So you can just go ahead and type in these commands and you've automatically created that, that database essentially. So what we now do is within a database, we have collections which are um, similar to tables in a way. They're just sort of collections of data. So what we do is we say db dot and then the name of the connection, uh, the collection. So the collection in this case, I'm going to say is messages. So if I wanted to grab all data from this messages collection, I would use the find method. Uh, and at the moment, that's returning nothing. So what we can do is we can go ahead and actually insert a, um, a collection or rec a record, if you like, into this collection. So we say db.messages.insert. And then in here, we enter the data. So I'm just going to create a uh, user sort of JSON string here. And I'm going to say uh, name Alex message hello there and that's now inserted that so now when I go ahead and go back to db find you can see that's given me that data out and we've got the an ID there as well a name and a message so this could change so for example if we were to do this again and add an additional field um, this would work so that's the sort of slight difference where we're not defining columns or anything like that um, Another quick tip is if we want to go ahead and remove everything, we just use the remove method. And then when we go ahead and say DB messages find, it just returns nothing. So we've now got a database called chat with a essentially a table, but you know more appropriately called a, con a collection uh, called messages. Uh, and we've looked at actually inserting data, retrieving data, and removing all data. So that's all we should really sort of need to know at this stage. You can go ahead and play around with it more if you want, but as long as we understand that, then when we connect from server.js, this will make a lot more sense. So um, with that done, we've now you know done everything we need to do, and we can go ahead and actually start to create our server, which is going to accept connections from our chat interface.